So by now it's pretty clear that I'm building an argument for a different way of thinking about ourselves, each other, and our place in the natural world. What I'm really excited about in this lecture is not thinking about sustainability as a something that we have to do or as a requirement, but really as something that has the ability to resolve some of the great motivations in human history, altruism, empathy, and of course self-interest. So let's go review for a minute. We talked about self-interest as the great engine that fueled the Industrial Revolution. There's many positives in there. Many, but not all, people had their quality of life raised. Some had it lowered. Um, and we're also looking at empathy across time, space, and species, a great driver of human activity. Um, so I like to talk about something called co-society. This is not my invention. I've got this, you can go to their website. But clearly they're looking at Adam Smith as a driver of human motivation, the me, the prophet, the invisible hand is the term that they're using for this. But we can also look at the second invisible hand, the idea of we, the idea of us being concerned not just for profit but for each other and for the planet as well. So this might be a, a 21st century Adam Smith's uh, vision of economics. And what I'm going to propose today is that we're going to unite them and join them and leverage them to create the foundations for a sustainable future. I think it's pretty powerful stuff. So now we're going to talk about the word ethos. And people always say, Rob, what is sustainability? Is it an ethic? Is it an ideal? Is it a mantra? Is it a meme? What the heck is it? How do you define it? Is it a religion? Um, and it's really actually probably none of those, although maybe it's all of those. In this case, I'm going to use the term ethos here in this course to be the definer of what I think sustainability is. You can look at some of the Latin or Greek foundations for this word. You know, the term moral appears here, and I think there is some sort of sense of morality within sustainability. Certainly the, the, the second invisible hand that we're talking about has a sense of morality in it. But again, sustainability is not just a moral imperative, and I think if it stands as a moral imperative, we're in trouble. The word ethos and ethics are very closely related, but they're different. Many people would argue that sustainability is an ethic or an ethical proposition. I personally like the term ethos because what it talks about is means the disposition, character, or fundamental values peculiar to a specific person, people, culture, or movement. And I think by now you'd all agree that sustainability is a movement, and within that movement is the ethos that we might use to define that. So it's really the spirit that moves us. It's, you could say it's the worldview, and we looked a lot at worldview earlier in the semester, and um, it is driving a lot of our ideas and customs. So for example, as T.S. Eliot wrote, the general ethos of the people they have to govern determines the behavior of the politicians. And what's great about that comment is, in this case, sustainability is about those values and how they play out in a set of behaviors. So if I design a green building, for example, I'm actually exhibiting the ethos of sustainability. When I design a non-green building, I'm exhibiting a different kind of ethos, right? So every time we design, every line that we draw on a piece of paper for a building is actually expressing some sort of ethos that we have about the world and ourselves. In some cases, it may just be about the client, but I, I still find that to be pretty interesting. So I'm going to argue in this course that sustainability is a new global ethos that is ultimately setting the values for society and ultimately determining our behaviors as we move forward. Now, there's a lot of flexibility within that, which, which is really important. I don't want sustainability to become something that we become a slave to, otherwise we'll have um, revolution against the revolution. But certainly, I do believe that it is the foundation of a the emerging worldview that we're moving towards right now. And, and you see, even in a bad economy, that sustainability continues to rise and gain credit. So we could say that sustainability is really based on the combination of the two invisible hands, self-interest and empathy. That's pretty pretty darn exciting concept for me. And so I think this diagram actually kind of plays it out and shows you that there is really, really you're always going to have self-interest. You're always going to have empathy. You're going to have greed. That is part of a human characteristic, but you're also going to have altruism. You're going to have a, a deep sense of materialism, of survivalism, but you're also going to have perhaps maybe an overly bleeding heart. Perhaps you can have too much empathy. And what sustainability is trying to do is resolve the dualities and join Adam Smith's invisible hand with the emerging second invisible hand of altruism. And so sustainability then, I argue in this course, is really the great resolution of those two forces coming together and playing off against each other. Okay, so that ends our look at sustainability as the great resolution in theory and concept. What about some examples that might further support the case and then a further conclusion that will end this module? I look forward to seeing you in the next movie. Thank you.